percent period four. That gives me 86 cents. Here I've got a dollar 40 being paid out as a dividend in year five, so it's 12 percent period five. Get the present value interest factor, multiply it by a dollar 40. That gives me 79 cents. And then remember, at the end of year five, I'm going to sell the stock for $45. Yes, you have a question. It's, it's present value. These are present value calculations. No, you want your present value. But the values are all from future value investments. Yeah, these these are the result of this here. The, the, the numbers that you're seeing here, where this is being divided, but I'm not dividing, I'm multiplying. Pull up your present value interest factor for an ordinary dollar. But I, I want I want yeah, it's good. I want you to get your hands dirty. I want you to walk through this so it makes sense to you that you can see where the numbers are coming from. Yes. Yes, my, my auditors, you concur, yes. Yeah, don't be all present value interest factor calculations. Yeah, so I, I want you to follow along. I hope you're following along because I want you to see where the numbers are coming from, right? Okay, so. Okay, and then, and then here's the other, uh, the other thing that we can look at that to me, it, it makes sense, right? Because I got $45 here, right? But I'm only ending up with $25.53 here. So that tells me it's gotta be a present value calculation. Because if I'm looking at future dollars, I know that the purchasing power of the dollar in the future is gonna be eroded as a result of inflationary pressure, right? So this value has to be less than this value. And if this value is less than this value, it tells me it's a present value calculation, okay? 